Today we're going to do something a little different. We're going to be painting transparent colored glass and I'm going to break it down. Let's get started. Future Joe here. I was able to put, find the photograph and put it here for you to see before we start painting. I wasn't sure I could do that. All right, so take a look at it and you can screenshot it and now we'll get on to the painting. I'm going to start this demo slowly. This is only going to be two times as fast as I paint. We're not going to spend the whole demo going this slowly, but, um, but I think it's really important to establish what's happened so far. I put in a gray neutral background and I have put some Naples yellow in the places that I know I want to remain white. I don't use a uh, masking fluid. That's just a choice of mine because I, I, I like the fluidity that uh, a regular paint stroke will give you as opposed to masking fluid. The next thing I do is I'm looking at the picture and um, I realize I haven't given you the picture. Uh, oh yeah, I'll put that at the beginning of the video. Um, and I look at the background and there's just one layer of transparent green glass between the background and um, the bowl. And I gray my green down so that it is the exact, I hope it's the exact same value as that gray. I've, so, I've incorporated, so what I'm doing is incorporating gray into these mixtures because uh, the glass is transparent and it's going to pick up um, a lot of that background. The next thing I do is I'm going to find my dark areas. I'll go darker later, but for right now I need to map them out because I don't want to forget them um, because there are going to be some more complex decisions coming up. So in order to get the green in, what I do is, uh, this, this I haven't grayed down in any way. I want this to be really vibrant in comparison to the rest of the, uh, dish. So, um, so there's no gray background and I'm putting it in, in those places where I can see the glass is really compressed. You know, this glass is probably made from a liquid and then gets pressed in a mold. And those places where the creases in the mold are tend to be more, um, have more color in them as opposed to where the glass is thinner. So I'm aware of that. And, um, and I'm also aware, here we go. Now I'm gonna put in some of those dark areas that I know that I want to know, I want to make sure I don't forget. I'm using a one inch brush. It's a number, it's a number 20 brush, but I don't know what that means exactly. Um, but the brush itself is uh, one inch wide where the bristles are. And the piece of paper is only a seven by 11 inch piece of paper. So it feels a little bit like wielding a club. It's a very, very large brush, but I want to find as large as I can, planes and color shifting areas and not lick the paper, you know, not go back at the paper and go lick, 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 but to find those places and to use my brush to enhance the form, to use my brush to sort of move around the form, the way the glass itself is formed. So all of that I'm thinking about right now at the same time. And, um, and now I got to get involved with the inside of that bowl. Now, like I said, it's going to pick up gray from what's behind the bowl. So I'm putting that in. It's a grayed down green because you see the background through the bowl. I'm hoping, although now I'm seeing it's not exactly the same value as the background. I was hoping that it would be. Um, maybe I should change that later. I don't, I, I don't remember. But there's definitely a lost edge in the back. So I'm going to let that just float away. You know, what I wanted to do here was I wanted to create a painting that had um, a very light form and then the apples, which are going to be, um, have much more mass. You know, that was what I wanted to do, show the contrast between the two types of forms. Now, let's see what happens now. I'm working on the front of the a bowl now. Yeah, the front of the bowl. The front of the bowl is picking up two layers of um, glass because it's the front layer and then you can also see the layer behind. So it has more green in it and less gray. So that's what why I've mixed this up. And I'm using, um, again, big strokes and, and using strokes that uh, go the way the bowl is formed because I think that's going to give it some energy. I hope that it does. Um, now back to mixing. Yeah, I guess now here it, it's one, just one layer of grass, uh, glass, excuse me. So there's a little bit of gray in that stem area. I'm keeping my, my paint, 
uh, palette as clean as I can because I know that the gray is important to have, but I don't want to have a tip over into a muddy gray. In other words, I want my grays to be as green as it's possible for them to be. And then I want my saturated green places to be as green as they can be without any gray in them. So I'm very aware of that at the same time that I'm looking at value. Meanwhile, all the test tabs are going up on the left. So far, I think I've used all the test tabs except the one that looks a little violet on the left-hand side. I must have felt that that was, um, must not have been what I saw. I can't remember now. It's hard to remember. But... It's surprising how many test dabs I have to do, but when, every time I make a dab, I'm comparing it to some decision that I've made up until now. But I've got my basic stuff in. You know, I've got, I've got uh, some basic darks to start with. And now I think, yeah, I saw a reflection in there. Now I'm not putting all the reflections in. You know, one of the challenges I'm finding with painting transparent glass is is not to paint everything you see. Paint only the important things you see because there are all these weird surface reflections that happen. So I have to keep telling myself in my own mind, I keep saying, don't paint the thing. Don't paint the surface. Paint what you see through the surface and keep it simple. Which takes is, is definitely taking some practice, but I think I'm getting better at doing it like, like most things. Um... I might be cleaning my palette now in order to make room for some red. I'm not sure. I can't remember what happens. I, I'm not set up yet to be able to let you see the palette at the same time that I'm painting. If you saw the palette at the same time, you would have seen when I added the gray mixtures and then where I used uh, pure pigment, you know, pure green instead. And the green is a mixed green for me. Okay, I thought I was maybe going to reds. Yeah. So I want these to have more mass. And they're quite bright, you know, because you can't see the gray through them. So that will indicate mass as well. So I've mixed up um, probably three colors in order to get these masses. With reds, I always try to overcompensate because reds are fugitive and will always sort of look a little faded when you come back even an hour later, certainly a day later. So I really try to pump these up as much as I can. And I also knew if I pumped them up in terms of color, in other words, added more pigment than paint, then um, my grays will look more gray in contrast. All right, now I'm looking for the side. There was a side of the apple that was picking up a little bit of light, and so I added a little bit of Naples yellow to it. And yeah, that, that worked out pretty well. Let's see what happens. I'm going to turn off the phone because I don't want to start over. All right, so that worked out pretty well. So far, things look really clean, which is what I want. You know, I'm carefully drying between layers. It's, it's so tempting to just start going rogue here and become, you know, go into my watercolor brain. Um, I thought I saw a little bit of warmth underneath that uh, bowl. You know, something else that's playing here is, of course, green and red. You know, being complementary colors, they should look... Um, they should bring out the best of each other in a composition. So that's what was happening here. I, I, you know, I'll be honest with you. I didn't see red under there, but I know there's a contact point and I felt a warmth. I could definitely feel there was a warmth. And so instead of putting a, oh, I don't know, like a violet under there or some other color, it just made sense to put in something warm like a red, which was consistent and would um, not leave those apples isolated completely on their own. Can't say I saw it. I would say I would. I felt it. Sometimes you feel something rather than see it. All right, so I'm reinforcing those dark shapes again, uh, dark lines. Uh, I, would, I would say they're shapes. And they're starting to make the glass look a little bit more transparent in comparison. So, okay, okay. now where, where the glass is grayish, the apple doesn't look as bright, and so I needed to somehow find that color, um, which was probably a variety of colors. But that's what interests me, is when you look through something transparent, how does it change the shapes around it? That's what I wanted to explore here. And I think on future compositions, I will probably put uh, the something... Uh, have more action going through the form, maybe even put the apple directly behind the, the bowl. I'm not sure. 
I haven't decided where I'm going yet. I never know where I'm going yet, but by tomorrow I will have decided something. I'm a daily painter, so I will I will paint every day. Now you can see a lot of test dabs on the left by now, right? This is a little quite a few of them. <laughs> I'm carefully, carefully, carefully building this painting. I think I've got something going that could be okay. I'm not feeling confident, but I am feeling determined, which is which is often the case. I want to make sure I'm not going to paint that back edge. I want that back edge to fade off into uh, into space. I really want that bowl to look like it's airy and have those apples look like they have mass and weight. So it looks like I'm fiddling, but I actually am very um, I'm very determined here. I know exactly what I'm doing. Yeah, I saw there was more. There was a little bit more intensity right there in the bowl. And maybe down there on the bottom as well, you know, because by now paint is starting to dry a little bit and so it starts to fade and so there are some adjustments, but I'm not going to go in and get all picky. I still want to stick with my basic, you know, what I got within the basic first 20 minutes, although by now this is probably, oh, way more than 20 minutes by now. Now, the, the bowl itself is going to send off some sort of cast shadow, and the cast shadow from a colored uh, object often tends to be the color of the object. So I used a, a green and then had it fade out into sort of an orange where it got warmer. I think I could have gone darker on that shadow, and maybe I do later. I'm not sure. But that, whoops, well, sorry for the camera work. But that is going to make things look more anchored into space. Uh, I mean, anchor, it's going to anchor it more to the table, which is something that I need. Now, we, now we've uh, switched a little bit. That weird camera thing that happened was um, me switching to another clip. And so now we're definitely going faster. This is probably going to be four times as fast as I work um, because it's, it's, uh, we're far enough along in the painting that I don't need to talk about um, the layers that got me here. And by layers, I did put paint on top of paint. It wasn't layering that way. It was making decisions about value and mass shapes and putting them in side by side and building this form. I really don't do a lot of layering. I, I don't know that there's been any layering going on yet, but I think there's going to be pretty soon. Yeah, here we go. I didn't feel like those apples had enough weight so I went in and found the darkest shadow. Not sh it wasn't a shadow, but the darkest f mass and went in and reinforced that. And instead of going into a violet, you know, adding a, um, a blue or something to this, or I could have added the complementary, I could have added green, but either one of those would have um, dulled things down and I wanted the apples to be as vibrant as possible, you know, as saturated as possible. So I know that I went in and used some burnt sienna instead, which was not the usual choice for me, but I think it worked out nicely here. I'm fiddling a little bit with that shadow underneath but hopefully not too much. Yeah, and then the shadows underneath the apples start to fade off a little bit. Okay, um, uh, so you know, once you've been painting for a while, you start to see more stuff. It's, it's, that's a tricky thing. You're, you, you see more, but I don't know that I want to uh, show more. You know, I keep telling myself, keep it simple. Ah, I still didn't feel like those apples had enough mass. So I went in and put a little bit more. I'm almost certain that that has quite a bit of uh, bird sienna in it and maybe some cronacronym gold. But they're starting to be quite red and saturated, and I don't think they're going to fade by tomorrow. I think they're here to stay, so I feel good about that. Um, so this, this painting is starting to do what I wanted it to do. You know, you can see all those test tabs, but it is starting to do what I wanted it to do, which was to have a form that was light and airy next to forms that were weighted in space. And also, you know, to use complementary colors. I mean, this is kind of an artist's playground, basically. But you can see how slowly I go ahead and make a decision about what's coming next. It's, it's, can't, it's not slow going, you know, because you're thinking the whole time. So I don't feel like I've been sitting for a long period of time. I hope you don't. But um, but I do find that, um, you know, I'm so engaged and involved in every decision that gets made that um, the time passes really, really quickly. 
But like I said, this is at this point we're um, four times as fast as I usually paint. So, and that, that tends to happen, you know, once you get something blocked in at the very beginning, you know, once you get something blocked in, when you get near the end, you, there isn't, you know, there aren't that many adjustments you can make. You've got the foundation at this point. Now the danger is, you know, overdoing it and, and painting too much. So, um, I think around here, I feel like I've got the painting and, um, I realize I need to give you the photograph so that you can see what I worked from. So I will put that in at the very end of the video. I should have put it in at the beginning, but um, we'll see if I can edit and do that. Ah, I pulled a little bit more green down in the front to anchor that uh, dish. So um, this is on Arsh paper, 7 by 11 inches. You can see all the test tabs. You can see a little bit of the photograph up on the upper left-hand corner of where I was working. But overall, I think this worked pretty well. I definitely achieved transparency, which was the goal. Transparency through a green glass object. So uh, remember to keep the whites of your paper white, your paints wet, mass for value, mix for color. Please, please join my YouTube channel, especially if you've watched for this period of time. It'd be so helpful to me. I see so many people have are watching but are not necessarily subscribing. That would be a big help to me. Um, and I will see you next time. Okay, bye-bye.